Good evening. You're joining midweek discussion on state of business, and tonight in our studios we have with us a senior lecturer of the Open University, Dr. Mahim Mendes, joining us. A very good evening to you and a warm welcome to our studios. Good evening. Uh, Dr. Mendes, I think uh, let's look back at your work, at your struggle, and of course, um, you voice firstly seeking a level playing field in society. Let's revisit this objective. A level playing field is an ideological position. Mm -hmm. That is an uh, idea that we fight for and we will have to continue fighting for in the days to come. With a change of regime, we do not automatically expect a level playing field. Mm -hmm. As university academics, part of the civil society in Sri Lanka, we will pursue the struggle for the future. Mm -hmm. As for education, we need a level playing field in many aspects of education. Primary, secondary and tertiary education, there should be a level playing field with equality and equity as principles respected by the government on behalf of the state. Mm -hmm. We expect the Ministry of Education and Higher Education to ensure that allocations are reasonably done in the best interest of the people for primary, secondary and tertiary education in line with the UNESCO benchmark of 6% GDP that people already know about. When you talk about the 6% of GDP, I think uh, you, we are having you here as the former spokesper as, as the spokesperson of uh, the Federation of University Teachers Association. You've been struggling for 6% as an allocation for education, 6% of GDP. I think uh, the interim budget which was presented to Parliament assured a 6% uh, allocation gradually. Haven't you won? Well, in principle, the new regime has committed very clearly mm -hmm. because they consulted the university academics in presenting the policy framework even for the 100 days program. And we are very happy that 6% GDP is respected in principle by the interim government. Now, we look forward to the government elected by the people at the next parliamentary elections to make sense of 6% GDP with equal weightage given to all sectors of education. Uh, Dr. Menus, when we talk about 6% of, of GDP for education, it just looks very, I mean, we're not, we're not talking about anything specific. Let's talk about your objectives for the education sector in the country, how you want this to be uplifted, what areas you want specific focus on? Well, I can talk about uh, higher education sector. Mm -hmm. We see that uh, the 15 national universities in the aftermath of uh, the battle, that is uh, aftermath uh, of war, mm -hmm. well, have been severely neglected with regard to physical and human infrastructure. We have had to tighten our belts, card positions in all faculties were frozen, physical infrastructure came to be almost frozen and we could not make sense mm -hmm. of the facilities that were meant for the university students. Now, a very clear commitment is needed by the government to uplift human and physical infrastructure of the university system. The universities at this moment of time have 25 to 30 percent academics with doctoral credentials. As a result of extremely poor working conditions for academics, the country faced severe brain drain. Mm -hmm. Academics were compelled to leave the country in search of greener pastures. Unless the university system is given the respectability that it deserves, we will not be able to retain even the academics who are already serving with doctoral credentials. So, the government need to understand that this could be a problem which is even worse than terrorism. But what immediate measures do you think we need to take? Well, they need to restructure 
on one side the salaries of university academics which they have failed to do for many years the promise was to restructure our salaries that is with regard to living conditions of the university academic community as for the students they need to give a large number of people in the university system need financial help mm -hmm. if you take the open university of sri lanka which goes on a different model of education called open distance learning the large mass of people cannot afford a higher education through undergraduate degrees the university authorities together with the government the higher education ministry need to see how the bulk of people who are qualified to enter university will be able to will be able to make sense of an education for the future this moment they are burdened with many socio economic problems so are you are you talking about um, a, a why uh, we're talking about free education here in sri lanka which has persisted for many decades now but are you talking about expanding this free education in the higher education sector and also uh, creating um, added opportunity for lecturers and university staff as you know when you look at the students who are qualified to enter university a microscopic minority of people are able to enter the 15 universities for limited vacancies in faculties mm -hmm. so they need to ensure that all students who are qualified to enter university will have places if they want to pursue with university degree education but As is this is, sustainable for sri lanka it has to be done it is the responsibility of the government on behalf of the state to ensure that people do not lag behind high education that they be accommodated meaningfully with proper human and physical infrastructure in the university system talking about um, human resources i think sri lanka has um, continuously been pointed out to a lack of human resources human capital in going forward in um, steering the growth that we require in the country with this political change how do you see uh, this segment going forward we are talking about higher level expertise needed mm -hmm. for the economy mm -hmm. well this is exactly what we are saying the university system need improvement improvements with regard to human and physical infrastructure the industry need to work together with the university system but as it is we lack the facilities that we require we cannot have senior level staff with the type of system that we have mm -hmm. it is fundamentally important for the sustenance of higher education system mainly in producing high level advanced scientific expertise we need to have a system an environment within which we will be able to attract the best possible minds into the university system at this moment of time we are unable to do so mm -hmm. the central bank or the other banks even petroleum corporation or the ports authority they are able to attract good graduates people with uh, higher qualifications at post graduate level into their staff but not the universities mm -hmm. talking about the po po political culture uh, finally before we wrap up i would like um, a view of from you as an academic about the political culture that has been created people see this as a change as as that that was what was advocated for and many others hold different opinion as an academic how do you see this well what do we mean by culture in simple terms the way we do things the way we have been doing things for number of decades have been extremely disgraceful the political culture was marked by acute criminalization and also to add more to this injury the country was getting increasingly militarized now what we have by way of a change of culture is revival of democratic democratic principles democratic way of life the democratic process of governance well what we expect the new government is to ensure that the precepts 
the norms, the principles laid down in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, starting with self-determination of the people, which is article number one, well will be respected. All people in this country will be able to consider Sri Lanka as their own homeland on a basis of equality and equity and people are respected for what they believe in. This had not been a country where the governments and those in powerful positions ever respected dissenting voices. Well, people had to sacrifice their lives because of the ideas that they propagated, like in the case of Lasanta Vikramatunga and various other journalists and people in other professions. Well, the new political culture that the academics believe in is a culture that is inspired, very clearly inspired by democratic principles. Right, I think on that note, it's time we wrap up. But thank you very much, Dr. Mahim Mendes, for your time here in our studios. Thank you very much for the opportunity. We had with us Dr. Mahim Mendes, Senior Lecturer of the Opening Open University of Sri Lanka, joining us on Midweek Discussion, State of Business.